Hello and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. This week we're talking about practicing mindfulness. And this is something that not only has positive effects mentally, but also physically. And if you're someone who's struggled with it in the past, then now's the perfect time to check out how our team tackles the issue. Have a magical week. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been listening. We've had our two best weeks ever over the last two weeks, so we want to thank everyone that's been out there and sharing it and loving it. It's been great. Uh, we're glad Yay! that you're enjoying it. Yes. <laughs> and that voice you've heard, I think it's a great way to introduce uh, her. Danette, how are you going this week? Yeah, I'm good, Jez. Had a um, full-on week in terms of uh, workshops and stuff, but it's been a great week, so... Very, very grateful. And we got some good rain last night, so that was awesome too. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Graham, Graham, how are you going this week? Hey, Jess, I'm good, thank you. Uh, it's been a busy week for us, but just Tanette said some nice rain last night and uh, we get to catch up with some friends and with grandkids over the weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. Very always, excited. Always good, always good. Thanks for that, Graham. And, and perhaps even catching up with the kids as well. <laughs> 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 Kids don't count as much as the grandkids. Oops, awkward. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. You know, Look, now you've just made it. <laughs> Graham, I'll, I'll edit it together so it sounds perfect. Don't worry. <laughs> um, and Alan, how are you going? I'm going great, Jess. Feels like we've had about a month worth of rain up here. We've had two sunny days, which is lift of the spirits, and here all getting outside and enjoying the outdoors again. <laughs> and also, Alan, as we were just talking about before we started recording, you're the only one that's uh, looking like in a t-shirt and looking very comfy and uh, warm. So we're all envious. <laughs> Queensland, wet one day, saturated the next. It's probably not funny actually for people who are getting drowned. Yeah, but but it is true. There's so much rain this year. For people that are listening from outside Australia, we are getting absolutely hammered with rain this year. After I'm sure people would have seen the bushfires from the last couple of years, but this year, total opposite. Mm. So it's just uh, nuts. But so hopefully everyone's staying safe up in Queensland. But it looks like for the moment at least, Alan, you're looking very uh, warm. So uh, I guess soak that up. Oh, absolutely, and- Jess. <laughs> and Jess, how's your week been? Yeah, it's been a good week, actually. Just turned 28 yesterday, so that's exciting. Can I just uh, interrupt right. for, for... Sorry, can I just interrupt for a sec? Yeah. Like, three, two... I can't do that. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Yesterday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Yesterday. Happy and birthday, birthday Jess. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. To you. Hip. Hooray. Hooray. Hip. Hooray. Hip. Hooray. Happy there birthday, Jess, weirdest, for yesterday. The weirdest lag going on in the background there. We are all one and a half seconds behind each other, so that will sound phenomenal. Uh-huh. I'm sure people will Happy get the birthday, same. Jess. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll blow out the candles. <laughs> straight into the mic there um so, uh, yeah thank you everyone uh the audio of that will sound hilarious so i hope people can enjoy the comedic value of that as well but great singing everybody uh so thank you for that um, awesome well today we're talking about practicing mindfulness something that i think is always a good thing but before that uh, something that I've wanted to do, I've thought about in the last couple of months is just adding some segments to the ML podcast, things that people can enjoy, maybe some short snippets that um, that people can sort of get into. So this week, we're going to be looking at the Magical Learning Recommendation of the Week. There we go. <laughs> So uh, even though I said it's the recommendation of the week and it's the first time we're doing this segment, I've actually got two this week, so uh, I'm already breaking the rules of it uh, on its first go. Oh, perfect. And John Scollins joined in. Hey, John, how are you going? I'm very good. How are you, Jess? Yeah, good, good, no good. Hey, John, good to see you again. Good to hey, see John. you. Sorry. I'm it's all right. It's all right. You've, no problem. You've actually joined at the perfect time because I'm doing our first ever um, segment that is the Magical Learning Recommendation of the Week. So this week, I've actually got two recommendations that people can go check out. Um, so one of them is just for a personal uh, thing that I find totally fascinating. So I'm someone who finds um, kind of cult documentaries and that kind of stuff very interesting. And I always wonder how these things start and how you can kind of get into them. And I've, there's a great YouTube video uh, that's by a therapist 
uh, and their name is Theremin Trees, and they've got a video called Bending Truth, How Adults Get Indoctrinated, and it's totally fascinating. It's from a psychology perspective, but it just basically the, it breaks it down to say that any it can happen to anyone, but the best thing you can do is be aware of how it happens um, is the best way to, to avoid it. So that one I totally recommend. It's really interesting as well. Great animation. I'm someone who is an animator, and I found it beautifully animated, so it's a great video. And the second one that's more related to today um, there's a YouTube channel called Plum Village, which is a French monastery that has their own YouTube channel, okay? And they've got all these different Buddhist monks. And uh, there's uh, one of their monks called Tichnut Han, uh, who passed away this year, but has a heap of videos on there. Um, and he talks about mindfulness. And one of the things that you can take away from that one, which is totally fascinating, is that every 15 minutes at Plum Village, they have a bell. Um, and when that bell goes off, everyone takes about 30 seconds just to be mindful in that moment, even if they're talking. So you'll see throughout the videos, the bell will go off while he's halfway through a sentence. He will just stop, take, you know, 15 seconds to just be mindful and then get back into it. But it's a totally fascinating thing to watch. I highly recommend it. So I'll put those in the links description. If either of those sound interesting to you, you can go check them out. But that's the first ML recommendation. I hope people uh, enjoy it. <laughs> awesome. Well, 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 it's great it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, let's and uh speaking of mindfulness and um and uh the Plum Village and everything, I think this week I wanted to talk about practicing mindfulness. It's something we touch on a lot throughout these podcasts, but I think this could be a great episode to really get in depth with it. Uh and I know that we've got some some great perspectives here uh to talk about it. So, I might start Graham with you this week. And the first question is what prevents us from being mindful? Great topic, by the way, Jess. Um, great topic again. Um, I, I actually wrote a couple of things down, but the one I might just sort of, I might just go with one, habits. Um, particularly, so the habits that don't support us being mindful, the habits that we can get into around being busy, around needing to have lots of uh, noise and distraction and things to focus our attention on and jumping from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. So, uh, and ironically, uh, I had a conversation with a couple of coaching clients this week about exactly this this idea of busyness where if I can fill my day with lots of things that I can get done so I can tick off, you know, I've done all of these things at the end of the day. Yes, I get a nice little dopamine hit in my brain so it makes me feel good. Um, but these habits of busyness... Um, make it almost impossible for us to be mindful because we're always looking for the next thing and then the next thing and the next thing. Mm, I love so that. So habits. Yeah. Bad that's, habits in particular. Yeah, very, uh, I love that. Uh, I love that take on it, Graham. Thank you for that. That's awesome. You're welcome. Um, John, I'll throw it to you. What prevents us from being mindful? Lack of awareness or focus as to what you want to actually do was the thing that came to my mind. Yes, it's like Graham was saying, we're busy for the sake of busy. Um, but are we doing the unimportant things um, rather than focusing on, well, what is it we want to achieve? Where do we want to go? Um, and then we lose sight of stopping and actually being aware of what are we doing in this situation? Not just are we in the moment, but what are, how do we feel? How, what are we thinking? Where are we going? Because we suddenly go, yeah, but I've also got that and suddenly I've got that as well. And, oh, shit. And you lose track of everything. So, yeah. That to me is is a big one. Mm. And I, I think kind of from both of your answers so far, I'm noticing it's actually almost you're building in a lack of uh, mindfulness as part of your day. If you really make it so busy, you're actually deliberately building in the fact that you're not going to have uh, mindfulness. It's kind of interesting. But mm. so that, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, Alan, I'll throw it to you. What prevents us from being mindful? I'm thinking the bell. If I had that bell every 15 minutes like the monks did, that would be a great start. And the other one coming up for me, Jez, is we don't know how. I know I've been in classes before with mates and we had a meditation at the end and we all sort of walk out going, well, what was that about? And my mind kept racing and we label that as failure rather than accepting that our mind is going to be active regardless. We can't stop that thought. And a good friend of mine said, um, mindfulness is a practice, which that really resonated with me where I'm not going to get it right to start with. It is something we practice, I suspect, for life. Mm. Yeah, that's such a fascinating way to put it. I love that, Alan. Yeah, practicing. 
because even this episode is going to be called practicing mindset i'd never really thought of the actual word practicing in that in that way i thought of it almost like more like practicing like a doctor doctor's practice but it's really practice like a learning a skill so thanks for that um danette i'll throw it to you what prevents us from being mindful so two things come to mind for me if we're stressed because then we know our brain goes to here. And so there's not really that capacity here. There's not the blood flow at the front of your brain to be able to go, just come back to, to here. And I think part of what creates that is we often are either thinking forward or we're thinking backward. And mindfulness really just needs us to be present. So that sort of, and it comes to Graham's point and Al's and, and John's as well, is it's, it's that habit of we get into rush, 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 or we just, oh, there's so much is going on, or oh, I'm worrying about this thing that's going to happen in three years' time or two weeks' time, and it's like, just be, just be. Yeah, it's a great question, Jess, and great topic. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I, I also just coming off that uh, Plum Village thing and what everyone's been saying, perhaps one other thing is that it's not culturally built into um, our culture yeah. to do it. You know, it's something that we're starting to try and put in now, but um, it sort of is a bit herky-jerky as to it's uh, how quickly it's being accepted. So anyway, thanks for all those answers. Great stuff. Um, well, let's jump into the positive side, but um, this is... Uh, if I have heard about practicing mindfulness, but, you know, maybe I'm sort of doing what Alan's had where, you know, you've had a, a go and it doesn't work and you're like, maybe this isn't for me. Um, what are some benefits of mindfulness? And I'll start with you, Danette, here. So one that I'd share is when I'm mindful, my experience of life is way much richer. So, you know, you can be mindful cooking dinner. And it's about, you know, just gently slicing and you could smell the aromas rather than rush, rush, rush and what else am I doing? And I think mindfulness when you're with another person, what a beautiful experience that is for both of you because you can have those really deep, rich conversations rather than that really superficial thing. So for me, that benefit of a, just a richer life experience, um, which hopefully helps you to want to then continue to slow down. Mm. Great question. Yeah, and I, I, I love that um, that idea of slowing down. I'm sure we'll touch on it in future answers, but that's a great one. Thank you for that. Alan, I'll throw it to you. What are some benefits of mindfulness? Um, based on my experience this morning, Jess, we don't drive straight past the turn off and get five kilometres down the road and realise where we were going to go. I wonder how many people relate to that because when I did it this morning, I've done this so many times. Where when I'm mindful and I'm relaxed rather than stressing about something, life is just so much easier. Yeah, I love that, Alan. I think that's definitely something we can all relate to to some degree or another. So yeah, definitely, definitely. That's beautiful. Thank you, Alan. Uh, John, what are some benefits of mindfulness? Well, Jez, when I when you when I first read the topic, I was thinking mindfulness is just being present in the moment. And being, you know, as Danette said, cutting the onions and being able to smell it and getting it in your eyes and crying and, and all the rest of it. But, um, but, you know, having that conversation with someone and being present for them. And then, um, then I sort of read a bit more on it. And it's like you talk about the Buddhist monks. It was about self-awareness. It was about where you're at in that moment. It's, it's, and that allows you to be in the moment. But it mindfulness helps to create that self-awareness what am i thinking what's you know what's my heart rate doing what what are my thoughts doing how am i feeling and that self-awareness is something that we you know you see a lot of people go through life and they're, they're just unaware of the impact that they have or don't have on people both positive and negative so if we can become more self-aware and do the practice um as al was saying because it is a constant practice. I don't think anyone's got life right yet. Um, you know, I think that becomes a great thing for us. Mm, yeah, and I, I love that. I think just bringing that together with exactly, because when I wrote this uh, thing, I was thinking the same thing as you were saying at the top there, John, where I was just like thinking of it as more of like an individual thing, but exactly what you are saying, mm. um, Danette, and what you've just brought up again there, John, being present for other people and being mindful in that sense is great. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, awesome. Graham, I'll throw it to you now. What are some benefits of mindfulness? I uh, took a slightly different tack with this and looked more at um, 
some of the health benefits. And the more, some of the, the really obvious ones, are, it just, it enables us to be calmer. So it, it helps us build resilience uh, and reduce stress and, and reduce our reaction to stress. Um, it's great for sleep. It improves, well, sorry, it lowers uh, issues around heart disease, chronic pain, inflammation. So the, for me, it's a good reminder that there isn't a separation between like our, what goes on between our ears and the rest of our body and the fact that our heart and our brain are so um, closely linked. And when, you know, John was talking about what's your heart doing and, and you know, we've known for a while now this idea of, um, of heart coherence. So when our heart um, is working in, in sync with our brain, just to put it really um, basically, then everything works better. So I think the, the health benefits of mindfulness, mental and physical, are phenomenal. And going back to the awareness thing, I think part of the, the challenge for all of us is that so many people are just, we're not aware that mindfulness is so powerful and still at this stage free and easy to do relatively. Um, but it, can I just, um, because it, it struck a chord with me, go back to John's point about how you, um, and I probably won't remember it correctly, but it's like how you, how you connect with others, how you affect or impact other people around you. Um, and that idea of how we show up in the world every day and, and becoming more aware of, of how we're doing that and the impact that that's having on people around us. Um, I, I, that's, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Mm, uh, so great point, John. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say, Graham, and I love that you took it uh, took that approach as well with the uh, physical and mental health parts of it as well. I sometimes think of uh, mindfulness because it feels kind of new. It feels kind of like, um, to some degree, I, to me, I guess, specifically, I would say it feels like something that's happened after the iPhone era as something that's become more popular. Um, and I think, uh, to some degree, whenever I, when I was doing a little bit of research and seeing kind of who are famous people that use mindfulness and you hear big names like Oprah, Seinfeld, you know, all these people that are ex extreme, you know, s extremely successful... Um, I, I still, for some reason in my mind, think of it as something that's like, uh, you can sort of achieve what they do without it. But I think that, I think that there is something about it that is it, you can't shortcut it. I think that, that, that a lot more flows from doing that than, um, just trying to be like, well, I can kind of do the most of the other stuff. Um, so it's just fascinating to me anyway. Um, all right, well, Graham, let's s stay with you here. Uh, what are some ways we can be more mindful? Um, again, great question. And uh, how are we looking for time? Can I can I indulge everyone for about ninety seconds? Yeah. Because um, I want to share. Uh, just it's just a little mindfulness um, practice. Practice is such a great word that um, I started using in some of my workshops around stress and resilience a few years ago. And again, it's it's free. It's relatively easy to do. Um, just don't try and do it while you're operating heavy machinery or driving motor vehicle, folks. Okay, safety warning. But what I'm going to invite everybody to do, and I'll, I'll ask everyone, so if you're listening to this, please, if you're in a safe place and you're not operating machinery or driving a car, um, join in. So what I'm going to ask everyone to do is just close your eyes to start with. And uh, I want you to pick a big toe, preferably one of yours. It'll work better if it's one of yours. Uh, if you are a chronic overachiever, then yes, you can choose both big toes. And I'm going to invite you to see just play with how much movement you can get with your big toe within whatever footwear you happen to be wearing at the moment so i'm going to start by inviting you to see if you can rotate your big toe in a clockwise direction and just pay attention to the sensation of movement in that toe what are you noticing about the toe itself, what are you noticing about the effect of rotating your big toe on the other toes in that foot? And then I'll invite you to change direction. So see if you can rotate your big toe in an anti-clockwise direction. Again, just paying attention to the sensation of movement 
noticing the impact on the other toes on that foot. And lastly, I'll invite you to see how much movement you can get vertically. Just try and move your big toe up and down. Again, paying attention to the sensation of movement. What are you feeling? Can you move that big toe completely independent of the other toes on your foot? And when you're ready, uh, just take a deep breath, slowly open your eyes and come back into the space that you're in. So if I can just wrap up really quickly, because I know that, that there's lots of other things to be said. Um, one of the things I always find interesting about how we think about mindfulness, and, and this is also because it's related to meditation, uh, is that people tell themselves, oh, I can't stop my mind from thinking, so I can't do it. And I think it's been misrepresented in that way because it's not about stopping your mind from thinking, it's just about directing the thought. And um, yeah, it's, it's something as simple as focusing on one of your toes. As I said, it's free. It doesn't have to be a toe, but any part of your body. And just doing that for a couple of minutes, I, the idea of the bell and, and yeah, again, building a habit around consciously choosing to stop um, is a brilliant idea. Sorry, thanks, thanks for indulging me. I hope that was helpful. No, that was really good, Graham. I got a lot from that. That definitely worked for me. So uh, I hope people that are listening and that aren't driving uh, took that in as well. So yeah, thank you so much for that, Graham. Very helpful. Um, John, I'll throw it to you. What are some ways we can be more mindful? Well, as been, has been discussed, it's a practice. So prioritizing it, setting it up, sometimes scheduling it, whatever you need to do, but make it a practice. Um, and whether it's before you get out of bed of a morning, before you go to, you know, and it might be the only time you do it in the day, before you have something to eat, you know, do something like what Graham did, direct your mind to think about something, you know, in a calming manner. Um, but yeah, just keep that practice. The Buddhist monks called it a practice for a reason. Um, you're not going to become superb at it in the first five goes. It's going to take some time. So take the time to have a go at it and see what comes out of it. Mm. Yeah, love that. Thank you for that, John. Um, Alan, I'll throw it to you now. Uh, what are some ways that we can be more mindful? Uh, a slightly different tech, Jez, relating to what um, John and Graham were saying about awareness and other people. And the question I often ask myself is, how did I leave the other person feeling? Where originally I didn't have any aware, or had very little awareness of other people. And I knew that when I was right, that felt really good for me. And someone asked, what's it like living in a house full of people that you've just made wrong? Oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. So now I often check in, you know, am I listening to the other person? And how am I making them feel? Because it's much more fun to live in a house full of people who believe they're right. I love that. I love that approach, Alan. And great little tidbit there. I think that's a, a great one. So thanks for that. Uh, Danette, what are some ways we can be more mindful? So it, it sort of comes to what everyone was talking, but um, setting an intention. So it's a bit like Al's ex example there. It's like, how do, I wanna, how do I want to leave people? Do I want to uplift them? Do I want to sort of bring them down? But also... How do I show up coming back to John's self-awareness bit? So if, and a dear friend of ours, who we've spoken this before, Dr. James Rouse, when he walks through a doorway, he will go, what, will love, what would love do here? And he comes fully back into the present and he becomes really heart focused. And that's beautiful mindfulness. And the other one, because I'm just staring at it, beautiful green farm, because we had gorgeous rain last night, is getting out in nature. Um, so mindfulness, the practice can be as you go for a walk, perhaps a run, or you're just sitting and just noticing your breath, letting the thoughts that don't serve you go, and just knowing that calm makes us so much wiser. And so particularly if you're a leader, this is super important. And it could be a leader at home. It could be a leader at school. It could be a leader in the workplace. 
the more mindful we are, the less we're likely to impact people in a not great way. Yeah, I'm um, also just staying on that nature point. I've noticed uh, personally when I like get get out in nature, I'm going with a mindful um, intention. One thing that sometimes I can notice and that I find fascinating is the different time scales that are happening at the same time. Like a tree can be, you know, 50, 60 years old and it's full of ants that, you know, might live 12 days, you know. But it's interesting to see the interplay of all those different time like scales uh together i th- I find that totally fascinating mm. um one thing that i've noticed for myself as well just in terms of how to be more mindful is that sometimes people can recommend a mindfulness technique to you and it doesn't work and you can feel a bit disheartened and it, you can feel a bit like oh maybe this isn't for me but there's so many different ways to do it and uh on youtube there's even five minute ones if you just want to just test it out and if that five minutes it doesn't work that's okay you can just try another one another day but one thing that i have noticed that um apps like calm and other things have done they've brought in more celebrities so maybe if you like a particular celebrity there actually may be a reading that might be for you some that i saw kevin hart does one harry styles does one chris hemsworth you know so people that you might know and you might like you might be able to listen to their one and that might help you as well um nice. awesome well thank you all so much for today what a great one and uh i want to thank graham especially for that uh that big toe meditation mm-hmm. that was really that was that was great and but i think we've got some great uh stuff from everyone here today um just some final thoughts from you Jeanette, on practicing mindfulness so I think it's a really good practice to um, you know, check in on yourself a couple of times during the day, take a couple of beautiful deep breaths just to center yourself because in that space we see more of what's really going on so our brain opens wide and we also access that inner wisdom. So when Graham was talking about that heart coherence, when our brain, when our heart's doing the normal beautiful calm, thudum, 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 That works with the brain and that opens up our intuition. So again, whether you're a leader at home, at school, at work, in the community, in that space, you're going to have a much more beautiful impact and you're going to bring your gorgeous wisdom that when you're busy, you just have really, you you don't access. Mm, So good. Thank thank you for that, Danette. Uh, Alan, I'll throw to you now just some final thoughts on practicing mindfulness. I think that key word is practice, Jez, and I love what you said about different things work for different people. It's don't give up. It's keep trying. If one way doesn't work, have another go. And you know, even years down the track, when I found going back to do things that you know didn't work for me a few years ago, do work now. That's great. Yeah, thanks for that, Alan. That's perfect. Uh, John, I'll throw to you final thoughts on practicing mindfulness. If you're finding that you're very stressed, that life's really busy, that um, you know, you're know you constantly on the go, mindfulness may be something to help slow all that down. And it doesn't have to be a, you know, a half an hour meditation or an hour meditation. No, Graham's, the one Graham took us through was what, 90 seconds or something like that. So, but it helps you just stop. It helps you to concentrate on something and breathe you slow down and you're going to make better decisions. You're going to, if you're a leader and you've got staff and you're constantly stressed, what impact is that having on your people? Um, You know, slow down. Yeah, I love that as well. John, talking about it from a leadership perspective, that's a great insight. So thanks for that. Um, Graham, I'll throw to you for final thoughts on practicing mindfulness. Uh, Well, I think just to, reiterate um, everyone else's comments about the the practice thing and um, best piece of advice I ever got ever heard about uh, meditation and mindfulness is that it's all about starting again the, the first time you try a mindfulness practice or a meditation practice chances are your mind's going to wander off because that's what it does so it's just noticing that not getting upset and not telling yourself you failed at it but just noticing that and then bring it back and then start again and it'll wander off again and bring it back start again it's all about starting again um and we, yeah we didn't mentioned um james rouse before we know, we know some wonderful friends have been meditating for more than 40 years and they'll still have a meditation practice sometimes where it just doesn't work as well as it could um so i think al mentioned now it's a it's a lifelong journey um but we know you know, there's there's so much evidence out there that it's good for us. And if it's good for us, it's good for people around us. So start small. Give yourself permission to fail because you will. And that's part of the journey anyway. But just keep at it. 
Cheap at it. Nice. Awesome. Can, yeah, can I it. add something? So yesterday I was running a leadership workshop and it was about leading through constant change. And a lot of it was focused on that whole self-awareness. And know, as leaders, if we're calm, then we create safety to navigate constant change. And one of the comments that a couple of people made at the end of the workshop was, we thought this would be about techniques to help our staff. We didn't realise that really to lead through that, it requires us to be in that space. So I think one of the beautiful things about mindfulness is when we do this, it automatically makes us better whatever we're doing and that impact on others to be able to navigate difficulties, et cetera, super important. So it's, it's a skill that helps everyone. Awesome. Great well, topic. Yeah. Thank you all so much. I feel like I've learned so much. I loved all the different approaches as well. I feel like we got we got to look at it from all sides. So I want to thank everybody for that. Uh, once again, I want to thank you all for being on the podcast today. Like I said, we've just had our two best weeks in a row. Uh, so thank you to everybody that's been listening. Thank you to all of you that are on the call today for being great parts of the success of this podcast. And uh, to everybody that's listening and sharing it, thank you so much. And we hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. And until next time, have a magical week. Thank Thanks, you, Jess. everyone. Thanks, John, Thanks, Alan, John, Alan, Thank Alan, you. Graham. Thanks, folks.